guys, welcome back to my channel. So first of all, if you hear some funny noises, it's my washer and dryer going in the background. They're kind of loud right now. Um, but anyways, I am going to tackle my whole house declutter. And if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that I do this about every six months. And about five months ago, we did move. So through our move, of course, I got rid of a lot of things. But I feel like as the seasons change and as you use different things for cooking and whatnot, you kind of don't need certain things. I am somewhat of a minimalist. I don't want to say completely because I feel like there's a lot of people that live much more minimalistic than I do. But um, I do only like to keep the things around that I'm using. So the only place that I won't be doing in this video is my pantry because I'm actually in the process of working on doing a pantry like makeover and that'll be coming in the next few weeks. The other thing too is I'm starting this off now. It's a little later in the day than I wanted it to be. So if for some reason I only get through about half of the house today, I will do a second video. So I'm sure by this title you will see if it's the entire house or part one or whatever. <laughs> um, hopefully I can get it all in today. I, since I do this every few months, I probably will be able to. And a lot of people, when they watch these videos, sometimes comment and say like, you didn't have much to declutter or this isn't really decluttering. And I consider it to be decluttering because that's kind of the point is to be maintaining. Way back when I started my YouTube channel, I think I did probably my biggest declutter ever. But since I do this every six months, um, there isn't as much to declutter. And as I go through the house, it's kind of nice to just straighten things up, organize things and whatnot. So one thing I am actually going to truly organize today is our junk drawer. I had tried doing that a while back and the method that we have going on, well, you'll see. It's just not working. So I'm gonna try something different and something new and that's where we'll start and we'll see how far we get. These containers I actually found at Target. They are $2 per pack. So some of the smaller containers come with more in the pack. The bigger ones come with less in the pack, but they're totally worth it. And the reason I decided to go ahead and try these is because I felt like I could maybe squish them. They're kind of like flexible and make it tight inside of the drawer so that my stuff doesn't slide around. That was the issue I was coming with is that all of the containers I had in there were sliding around every time we would close the drawer. The other thing I did is I swapped out my drawer liner for a like, I don't know, this kind of is cushiony or like rubbery um, versus just contact paper. So I was hoping that would help to keep things in place as well. Another thing I was doing was taking out the contact paper because it was the same print that I used on my countertops. If you're new here, um, I did some renter's hacks recently in our house and one of them was using contact paper on the countertops. So obviously the inside of the drawers, I wanted to look a little bit different just so that the countertops looked more realistic. This silverware organizer is from Target and I will link as much of the things I'm using that I can find in the description box below.
something I've wanted to do for a while, mainly for the aesthetic and how they look, is to put some shelf liner in the bottom shelf of my shelves. So whenever you open it up, it looks really clean. I was considering doing the top shelf and the middle shelf, but I think it's a little bit difficult to slide the cups in whenever this is on them. So at least whenever somebody opens up the cabinet, the part that they see right in front of them looks nice and clean and tidy. And you know, there's marks and things on the original shelf in the cabinet. So it covers all of that up and just gives it a fresh look. The other thing I did is I organized my lids. I had this one container with like jar lids and specific lids for my girls cups and stuff. So I used used some extra of the gray um, drawer dividers to kind of get those lids divided up where they needed to go. Then I also went ahead and put the shelf liner on the bottom shelf of all of my other cabinets. These things didn't need to be decluttered or um, really gone through, but I wanted it to be all the same. The next big one was my like container kind of cabinet. This one is one I feel like I have to go through pretty often. Sometimes I go through this more often than just six months, um, like maybe more like three months, just because it gets so dumped around and stuff. And I go through and I make sure that um, my lids work on my containers and that I have, you know, I don't have any extra floating lids that don't have a container all those sorts of things. And with these bottom cabinets, as you see me go through, there was a few of them that had some leaking that happened in them. I'm not sure what from. Um, I think one of them was like an old teapot and stuff like that. And um, I just was really glad that I had put contact paper in when we first moved in, because it was so easy to pull it up and just replace it. So in the bottoms of all of the bottom cabinets, I did use just normal everyday contact paper. Next was my cabinet that I keep like my mixing bowls in and my measuring spoons. So I had a pretty big overflow of these. Whenever we moved, I actually got rid of even more. I don't know how I accumulated so many of the like stainless steel mixing bowls, but I just did. And then over Christmas, my dad gave me a new um, glass mixing bowl and also a new measuring cup that's glass. So I, I really like those better than the stainless steel ones. I like to be able to see what I'm doing and they have the measurements on the side. So I actually did get rid of some of my other stainless steel ones and also got rid of a few of my measuring cups.
Contact paper is such a lifesaver for sinks that, you know, have had a water leak. And obviously this one has not while we lived in this house, but um, it has spots and things under it. So the contact paper definitely cleans it up and makes it more wipeable. Um, another thing is I keep a basket under here with all of my hand towels and dish cloths. It just saves me a lot of drawer space and uh, it's easy to access, especially for my daughters. You know, if they have a spill or something, they can uh, reach the towels really easily and it's actually come in handy that it's more at their level. This cabinet holds my cookware. I'm very minimalistic whenever it comes to my cookware. I like my pressure cooker, and I did add this blue bin in with all of my pressure cooker accessories. They were just floating around down there and really needed something to kind of keep them contained. So besides my pressure cooker, I also use my Dutch oven, and then I recently got a skillet, and I have a saucepan. And I did have a big griddle I was using on top of my stove. We still have it, but it was getting a little worn out after years of use. So, very minimalistic. I don't really like um, cookware sets just because I feel like there's so much stuff I don't use and then I'm constantly digging through them. Next, I went ahead and tackled our closet. This is something that through the holidays, for some reason, I was storing you know, gifts and stuff in here and I feel like the extra clutter kind of just made us add more clutter. Sometimes that happens when a space is already kind of messy, you just don't care and you add more mess to it and I think that's kind of what was happening. So um, I added some extra bins to the top shelf and I went through all of my clothing, um, just pulling out things that I don't use anymore. My husband does that on his own with his own things. And then did a general cleanup of putting things where they needed to go.
All right, so anything besides clothing, I will either throw away or donate. But clothing, particularly my clothing, I actually have a Poshmark shop and I do sell it as long as it doesn't have stains and things on it. Um, I kind of weed through what is good enough to sell and what's not. And I take pictures like this and just upload them. So I will leave my Poshmark account below. I did actually put all of these things on my account this day so some of them have sold and there is a good amount left so if you guys would be interested you can check that out now before christmas i did already declutter my daughter's closet but like i said we got some new things and they got some christmas gifts so i needed to kind of reorganize or just kind of move some things around in their play closet here so that everything fit and wasn't all you know dumped around or piled up in there. And I also rewrote a few of their labels and just put things in the right bins. So I got through about half of the house this day and I decided I'm just going to make a second video because I still have a lot to do like um, my daughter's closet, the linen closet, and our homeschool closet and bathrooms. So I will do that in a second video that I will more than likely put up next week. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspired you to get decluttering this New Year's. If you're new here, I'd love it if you subscribed. Also, don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video.